I bought this poor little guy without a mount. As we clearly see here, all four screw mounts are gone. I'm left wondering how is this even possible, considering the rest of the lens, including the housing, is in great condition. Before installing new screw holes, I had to level the surface and remove any leftover plastic. I was thinking of using brass M2 standoffs and melting them into the barrel with a soldering iron, but I chose a less destructive approach, epoxy glue. For replacement screw mounts, I used M2 standoffs from my FPV drone flight controller stacks. Had to do some Dremel work on them though, but it was fun. It was a bit of a hassle to line them up properly and make sure they fit well with the replacement mount I ordered on eBay, but it turned out very nicely. So why do I keep buying broken lenses? Well, I find it kind of sad to throw away a lens that I could possibly fix. And at first glance they do look kind of rough, but most of the time it's really not that bad. It's extremely rewarding when you finally fix one of these, and even while in the process of repair and fixing, fixing the lens, I get all excited and giddy and even start visualizing the shots that I'm gonna make with the lens that I'm currently, currently working on. When it comes to the tools I use, you need only but a few and a bit of patience to fix one of these beauties. So, here we are again in front of the infamous wall of truth. I took samples at 24, 35, 50 and 70 millimeters from f4 to f11. Instead of talking about each sample individually, I'm gonna upload them all to Google Drive so you can check out the raw samples for yourself. To sum up my impressions, f4 to f11 it is quite sharp. You can spot a bit of softness in the far corners at 24mm f4 and 70mm f4, but that is acceptable in my book. Vignetting is faint and I haven't spotted any chromatic aberration whatsoever. Distortion is standard, at 24mm there is visible barrel distortion, at 35mm it is perfect. 50mm introduces a bit of pincushion distortion and it stays the same up to 70mm. Minimum focus distance is lackluster at 0.4m, but I'll take it, I have dedicated macro lenses for close-ups anyway. Close focus image performance is good, no excessive fringing, softness, aberration, it's fine. This little guy is meant to be a compact and light all-in-one lens and it serves its purpose quite admirably. Obvious problem is its maximum aperture of f4, but even if the money is not an issue for you, buying a Sony G Master 24-70mm f2.8 adds a considerable amount of weight and heft to it. To be exact, this lens weighs 426 grams and G Master f2.8 is 886 grams. That's double the weight. Is it really worth it for a one stop of light? <sighs> Don't know, you tell me. Even though FX3 and other Sony cameras have in-body image stabilization, it is trash. I wouldn't really rely on it. But when IBIS is paired with an OSS optical steady shot lens like this one, results are far more pleasing. And if you add a gimbal into the mix, pure ecstasy is sure to follow. It's so smooth and stable. <laughs>